Hello again, as mentioned in the previous video, this course that you are registered for is the underlying theoretical building block of becoming a DevOps engineer. So let's see who is a DevOps engineer. There are many roles that have been played in this new emerging field, including DevOps evangelist, automation architect, QA professional, but also there are some hands-on activities like utility technology player, release manager, security engineer, and yes, of course, the software developer. Generally speaking, tasks associated with DevOps are subdivided into five different and complementary categories as shown. These are maintaining code base with version control, making software builds and tests with continuous integration, applying configuration management, managing cloud services, adapting automation for continuous delivery. So let's start with version control and the ability and skill set to maintain code base with version control. You must be using version control like GET or Subversion, so you need to have expert knowledge on how to use the source code management tools like get and subversion. Let's say your group writes in their scripts in Python or uh, Ruby. All such codes have to be included in your source code management. Obviously, you have to manage all these different files together at one place. Next, let's briefly talk about building and testing solutions so you need continuous integration platform. In such a platform, developers check the code locally on their computers. When completed, they commit changes to the repository. Repository obviously sends a request webhook to CI system. CI server runs jobs. It does the testing, coverage, check syntax and others. And then CI server registers save, uh, saved artifacts for testing. If the build or test fails, the CI server alerts the team and so the team fixes the issue. You can choose either Circle C, Travis or Jenkins. These are actually tools that allow continuous integration, letting you define continuous integration, continuous test and continuous delivery pipeline for your projects. Expert knowledge about using these tools are also required. So a DevOps engineer has to have the skills on how to actually configure CircleC, Jenkins, and other tools of continuous integration. So that is required to be able to pull source code repositories and how it will actually interact with one another. Now, next, let us to discuss a bit about configuration management that is actually the management of software and hardware. It is the management of the entire infrastructure, software as well as hardware, and it defines how each of the existing servers and each uh, of node machines should work. At this stage, a baseline according to existing architecture, according to the tasks that have to be performed is created. And at this stage, CM actually documents everything so that if needed, one roll back to a previous version of the existing infrastructure. Configuration management encompasses the practices and tools to automate the delivery and operations of infrastructure. CM solutions model infrastructure, continually monitor and enforce desired configuration and automatically remediate any unexpected changes or configuration drift. CM enables the DevOps engineer to deliver better software faster. This actually helps lay the foundation for DevOps. For this part, a DevOps engineer must understand how to configure servers properly, what kind of scripts to write, and when exactly to run them, and how to use different configuration management tools like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, SaltStack, or others in the market. All these configuration management tools are designed to reduce the complexity of configuring distributed infrastructure resources, enabling speed and ensuring reliability and compliance. 
Now, let's discuss cloud servers management. This is another major skill set of DevOps that an engineer needs to have expertise on. This means core cloud computing and storage components, and you have to understand most of virtualization technologies like VMware and OpenStack. You need to have the skills on how to use an elastic infrastructure like Azure, Amazon Web Services, Google, in your digital world so that you can avail quick scale up and how to scale down if needed. Now, there is a lot of controversies on which one is better or not, but in actuality, they are used for different purposes and one is good for one and another might be ideal for a different situation. Next and last, but for sure not the least, is the issue of automation. And whenever someone says, I am in automation, that's what they mean by being a DevOps engineer. You need to have a proper knowledge on how to use automation as well. You need to understand apply orchestration. That means the set of skills that you require to orchestrate code push using configuration management tools. Code push is a cloud service that enables Cordova and React Native developers to deploy mobile app updates directly to their user's device. You need to define how this task will carry out in the right order, and that is called orchestration. This means that you have to write scripts, so you need to have a vast skill and vast knowledge on which tasks to perform and which one should go first. You have to analyze as well as you need skills of using tools like Ansible and Jenkins in this respect as well. Guess what? Jenkins, Travis, Ansible, and Chef are also automation tools. You need to have an expert knowledge of at least one of them. You will become familiar with most of these aspects as you go through the course. The independent work of each week's activities are dedicated to understanding DevOps in their different aspects and you will apply as much as your course project allows these concepts to be applied. In the next and the final part, we will look at the textbook and the core material of the course. It is important to keep in mind that a thorough understanding of the theoretical aspects of lifecycle management is at the core of successful IT service delivery.